Welcome to Bad at Board Games. My name is Brad Lake, and I'm bad at board games, so you don't have to be. And today we're going to keep hitting all the buttons because I enjoy doing the buttons and things. And That's supposed to be the leaping sound. I don't know if it'll really bleep me out, though. <laughs> I have been binging Kingdom Death, and I know there's tons of Kingdom Death things out there already. However, from a noob perspective, I thought I'd go over some top... 5, 10, I don't know what the video is going to be called. Things that you may be getting wrong if you've just started playing Kingdom Death that you may want to know. And I found out that like people have been playing Kingdom Death, some of these things they've been getting wrong as well. So you can see a little series as I learn each one of these things as we go. So you may, those non-Kingdom Death people or people who aren't interested in this, I uh, understand. Click off now and <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day. But for those of you who are interested in this game, um, who have played it, and maybe you do or don't know this. So just thought I'd go through a few things, especially for those of you thinking about getting it or just picking it up and being like, there's so many rules, it's so easy to get lost in what's going on. So I'm gonna get right to it. Um, and these are just some of the, the noob mistakes that I've made, I have posted on Facebook and I've seen a lot of other people make. So I'm like, I'm just gonna go through these pretty quick. Um, Affinities, when you buy gear, like you, if you get the little luck guy to increase your luck, you still need to have two of those um, on your board, the little blue affinity things. So make sure if you're buying a piece of equipment that you can actually use it uh, like me, or then you think, oh, I've got plus one luck because I bought this thing. Not necessarily. <laughs> you have to remember there's a there's another piece to buying all the, all the equipment. Um, so that's number one. And these aren't in any particular order. Number two is adjacencies. So adjacent is orthogonal, up and down, left and right. If you are diagonal to the monster, you are not adjacent to the monster. This can work for you and against you, depending on if the monster is attacking something adjacent. But if you only have a range one weapon, which is what you start off with, you cannot attack diagonally. So just be aware of that. So as you're trying to move around, you may be like, oh, I'm next to the guy. Well, no, you're not. <laughs> so diagonal right next to the monster, you have to have a range two weapon to be able to, or greater to be able to hit him. Um, critical hits. So critical hits are a whole thing. I'm actually going to do probably a 15 minute thing because it sparks like 47 comments <laughs> on Facebook when I posted it into the Kingdom Death, um, you know, Facebook page asking to clarify critical hits, but critical hits will always wound on, you know, a lantern of 10, but it's still, even if there's not a critical hit area, um, but there's a, there's a whole bunch that goes along with critical hits. And the other side of that is your founding stone that you get. You, it's a critical wound roll. So that's, that's different. So the, you're automatically rolling to wound with your founding stone versus like having to hit and then wound. So there's a big difference with the founding stone is, and it's like the only thing I've seen in the game that people talk about is like, it's a critical wound roll, not a hit then wound roll. So <laughs> there's a differentiation in those two things. Um, lucky also kind of plays into this critical thing. So, after you hit, if you're lucky, you know, a nine and a 10, if you have plus one luck, it, it still goes, if it, if the point with lucky is if this location does not have a critical, um, wound on it and it's just like, you can't hurt it or something, luck doesn't play a factor to be able to be lucky and get a critical hit and take a nine to a 10 then you actually have to have drawn a hit location that could be become a crit. So another little differentiation, the nine doesn't become an automatic wound or lucky. It actually has to be a critical hit location. Um, so the couple of other things with the monsters and how they move when it says they jump back. So the way I was interpreting this, you may attack and you may draw fail and then you'll see the, the response location 
it says the jump monster monster jumps back. I was kind of meaning that that it was moving backwards in the way it was located. What they actually mean is it moves away from the person who attacked it. So it's going to move the opposite direction. So that may collide with somebody else. I was always colliding it with whoever was in the blind spot, um, but that may not have been the attacker. So be aware of that on the response side of monsters when it says they jump back. It's not it's not depending on which way they're facing. They're jumping back from the person who attacked them. Um, and then, so that that's that part of it. Um, if you're in the blind spot, there is a rule. Typically, you will get plus one accuracy when you're in the blind spot. That's something I, I wasn't doing at the beginning. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. That is in there. And... Most people may already remember that. They're like, oh, I want to get in the blind spot. I was getting in the blind spot more or less just to not be targeted, but the blind spot actually gives you plus one to hit. So be aware of that. And then this one I didn't realize. And you're just reading so much and not real, you know, the settlement phase. So you have a stack of cards for settlement, and that's where like the murderer is and all these others. After you do a, a settlement, I can't remember, experience. Um, you reshuffle that deck. So it, the lingering results, I was kind of thought that that like stayed in your village. No, it, it stays for that phase, that village phase, but then settlement phase, but then everything gets reshuffled. Like you could draw a murder time and time and time again, if you shuffle poorly. Right. Um, so that, that event deck is always full and it's always recycling and you may see the same thing multiple times and you may never see some other cards. So just realize that after every settlement event, you're going to re reshuffle the settlement deck. Um, and then when you're knocked down, the only thing that you can do, you can dodge when you knock down, you can't encourage when you're knocked down. Um, you can't do any of the other things. So this has been FAQ'd. So, but you can dodge if you're knocked down. <coughs> um, on the other side of dodge is it has to be like rolling to hit. So things like that trigger, and they specifically said the white lion, it has a grab. Um, so it that action or that response is not a roll to hit. So you can only dodge rolls to hit. Um, when it's a reaction and it's a grab, the white lion, you can't dodge that. So there's a there's a portion where the white lion grabs you and runs away and, you know, tries to maul you. Um, you cannot dodge those, those type of actions. And then, let's see, the last one I've got for today is settlement does not gain um, the death principle after your first death. So... As you gain principles, it's going to give you something for the future turns. So like principle of death, you could be like, oh, I'm going to make a grave and there's benefits for your population for that. Or we're going to cannibalize them and you cannibalize them, you're going to get a resource. You don't get that resource for the first time. So those are a few things. Um, I'm going to try to make a, a video about the critical hits and, and the list of of quotes and comments and everything that people have talked about and getting down to all the details of critical hits. So look for that this week, possibly. And uh, my board game subscribers, <laughs> if you watch this, thank you for watching it. Um, for any king new Kingdom Death monsters like myself, um, hopefully this was a little bit helpful. And I'm just gonna kind of bring things up as I go and as I enjoy playing the game. So just remember, no matter how you play, whether you're playing solo with family or friends, Enjoy whatever you are bringing to the table. Have a great night.